On August 11, 1974, in a cornfield located south of DuPont in Louisiana, Ted John Fugue was out hunting raccoons. It was around 10.45 p.m. when he noticed a strange humming sound, which was quickly replaced by an erratic screeching noise. Looking for the source of the noise, Fuse turned and peered into the night sky. This is when he spotted a strange saucer-shaped object about 1,000 feet away, at an elevation of about 450 feet. It was stationary and positioned in a direction pointing towards Fugue. The main body of the object had the color of brick red, or the color of the setting sun. On the outer edges of the object there seemed to be flames of red ejecting from the complete circumference of the object. The top of the craft was dome-shaped and was a little less reddish than the base. Fuchs stared at it in disbelief as it remained motionless for about one minute. During that time it made the screeching noise again for about 15 seconds and then became completely silent, all while still ejecting fire from its sides. For some unknown reason Fugue claims he turned around and fired a shot into a nearby tree. When he looked back at the object he noticed that it was now moving in his direction. It made no sound, it did not seem to be ejecting any extra fire. Sensing he might be in danger, Fugue turned his headlight off and began walking away very fast. The object continued to move towards him slowly, lowering its elevation to about 300 feet. Once it moved about 400 feet closer to Fugue, it suddenly changed direction and began moving away from him, towards the east. It continued to move away at a slow speed, completely silent, until he lost sight of it behind the trees. This account appeared in the August 15, 1974 edition of the Cottonport Leader. You guys are going to have to indulge me for a bit. Um, I kind of, I'm going to kind of get into the Rue stuff for a bit. Um, when I read this case, there was a couple things that kind of stood out to me. In the first instance, there's this object there. The witness clearly, uh, he, he became aware of it. He heard this humming sound. He looked up, he heard this humming sound, he saw the object, and he said that it started screeching. And it, the first thing I thought of is, um, I, I read a lot of reports, I mean hundreds of reports of um, Bigfoot light creatures and UFOs being seen in the same vicinity. Um, or people seeing Bigfoots entering or exiting UFOs. Um, this kind of like, when I, when I read this, I thought, for some reason I kept thinking, maybe this, this object was, was there. Uh, signaling to these creatures that they, that they were there. Uh, and then when this witness uh, fired a shot into the tree, it, it was like the, the UFO or the occupants of the UFO became aware of his presence. They were like, oh wait, there's a guy here. So it kind of came over to him. And then when they realized, what, what I get from the story is that when it realized that this guy was there, it kind of like sized them up and then decided, you know what, it's not worth the trouble, and they took off. But that's just like the first thing that I thought of. It was like, why would this UFO be, you know, making this screeching sound? And he said that it kept, it kept doing it. And the, to me, it was like, a, and it was like letting up this, it was like on fire. The circumference of this object was on fire. It, it, to me, it sounds like a, a lighthouse situation. You're just trying to guide them, you know, they're sounding the alarm, and there's this glowing object that the, you can clearly see. It was like it was trying to get uh, the attention of something or somebody, you know, to let them know that they're there, and, you know, we're here to pick you up, maybe. Um, that's what I got. And then they just happened that this guy was there, and it kind of screwed everything up. That's another aspect of the story that I found to be strange, is that why would, why did he turn and shoot at the tree? Uh, it, it, he's sitting there, he's looking at this strange craft, he doesn't know what it is, he doesn't know why it's there. Uh, and then he turns and for no apparent reason he, he fires uh, his weapon into a tree, and then which gets its attention. It, 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 doesn't, it doesn't make a lot of sense why he did that 
Um, and then once it, you know, once he got its attention, he he freaked out and like turned his light off, his headlamp or whatever, and then he, he kind of took off because it started to come towards him. And I, I don't know, it just seems strange that he would do that. And there's, and of course, I I read this in a newspaper report, so it doesn't really, it doesn't say why he did it. It just said that he did that. Beginning in June 1978, Mr. and Mrs. Herbert Clayton of Paris Township in Ohio claimed that they had been seeing a strange hairy bipedal creature lurking around their property, typically near their chicken coop. There wasn't much they could do about their hairy pest, so they did their best to just ignore it. However, that all changed on the night of August 21st, 1978. As reported in the August 24th, 1978 edition of the Cleveland Plain Dealer, and in the Ohio Tribune Chronicle. Stark County Sheriff James Shannon claims he was called out to the Clayton farm to investigate a terrifying incident that occurred on Monday night. Apparently the Claytons and four other people, there were six witnesses in total, had gone outside to investigate a strange noise around the chicken coop. There they found, sitting atop the coop, a hairy, six-foot-tall creature. Two other similar but smaller creatures were also seen to be standing near the coop. At one point, one of the Clayton's friends jumped into a car and inched it across the backyard toward where the creatures were standing. The headlights of the vehicle allowed everyone present to see the creatures clearly. Suddenly, the larger one hopped off the coop and began running towards the car. This terrified the remaining five witnesses who scrambled into the house. The driver of the car, not surprisingly, immediately sped away from the area. As the Claytons watched from a window, the larger creature looked at them and began walking towards the house. It actually walked right up to the window of the house and looked inside at them. Due to its bushy hair and the fact that it was nighttime, the witnesses were not able to make out any facial features. To them it just looked like a dark silhouette. Soon after they began hearing footsteps on the roof of the house. Frightened, Mrs. Clayton loaded a gun, at which point the creature and the others scampered off into the woods which surrounded the Clayton's property. During this time, Sheriff James Shannon was called out to the house. When I got there, the people were visibly shaken and some were afraid to go to sleep, Shannon told the newspaper. It was obvious they saw something, but what? Shannon claims that he went out and scattered the hilly, heavily wooded area around the Clayton farm, but found no sign of any of the creatures. He did find two footprints, though. There were two footprints, one distinguishable, the other not so good. Though Shannon admitted that he was skeptical of their claim, he was certain that something did indeed happen on the Clayton farm that August night. The, the aspect of this story that really kind of got my attention was that when the uh, when the Claytons and I don't know if these four other people, it doesn't really say if they're family members or if they're friends, but they had um, they had gone out to investigate this this noise around the chicken coop, and the thing that I found amusing was that there was these you know these three uh, creatures, Bigfoots I guess, bipedal creatures, hairy bipedal creatures, sitting. Uh, one of them was sitting on top of the chicken coop. And the other two were standing there. It was like they were just hanging out. You know, you go down to the park or something, and you, you kind of, or you go, you go somewhere, and you just sort of, you just hang out and you, you chat and stuff. That's sort of like the feeling I got from the story is that these, uh, these three creatures, which it, it doesn't say if they're, you know, I get the sense that it was probably a family. You know, there was like two little ones, and and there was the big one. I'm assuming that was the the dad and the, there was the mother and the kid but I, I don't know I'm just guessing at that one but it just I just found it funny it's like they kind of like went to this chicken coop and they were kind of hanging out and then these uh, people came out and, and kind of like screwed everything up for them they were like uh, talking or doing whatever big I don't know Bigfoot creatures do 
And then the uh, this guy started coming across the lawn with the car, and that was when the, the, the bigger one, I guess, kind of like freaked out. This creature like walked right up to the window and looked inside the house. And that, to me, I don't know what it is, but that's really creeped me out. I, I don't like reading stories where these creatures kind of like walk up to the window of your in your house and they look in. That's that. That's just spooky to me. I have to give Albert Rosales credit. He's the one that sent me the story. Uh, he asked me what I thought of the picture, and I didn't. I didn't know what to make of it. I thought maybe it was upside down. I I didn't know. I looked at it. it I, I don't know what it is. It's it kind of like to me when I first saw it. It almost like looked like a bunny, like a black bunny, like a giant black bunny, I guess. But it's when you look at it closer, you realize that it's. I, I don't know what it is. It's really strange. In autumn of 2017, in Krasinino village in the Tiamen region in Russia, a man had gone into the forest looking to pick some mushrooms. At around 3 p.m. that afternoon, something hanging on a tree caught his attention. It was a creature unlike anything he'd ever seen before. He described it as dark, about six and a half feet long, and resembling a sloth, with exceptionally long front hands that held on to the trunk of the tree and short legs. It appeared to be constantly squirming. After a few minutes of staring at this thing, the witness became frightened and felt he might be in danger. He sat down on the ground to retrieve a knife from his belongings. As he was doing this, he realized that he had a cell phone in his bag and quickly snapped a photo of the strange creature. As if realizing it had been photographed, the creature got off the tree and stood upright on the ground while continuing to squirm. This is when things got really strange. In the place where the head should have been, a hole seemed to form. A bright blue glow appeared from said hole and then the creature disappeared. The witness was completely stunned. Afraid of radiation or some other contaminant, the witness dared not approach the tree or the area where the creature had stood. He simply turned and ran. The witness sent his photo to you of Fossetti, who noted that the creature had a quote incomprehensible body and appeared to be twisted on the tree. UFO said he claims that on the day of the witness's sighting, other residents in the area described observing a blue light deep in the forest later that evening.
Thank you.